Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video I'm going to show you how to host your own git repo thanks to Gitia. Gitte? Who cares? It's got T in it and as an Englishman I fully approve. This will mean that we are able to host all of our code repository on our home network. This means we no longer have to have a reliance on external services such as GitHub. That's good for a couple of reasons, chiefly privacy and security. It means we can be lazy and not encrypt our secrets, albeit I recommend you still do, and I'll come on to that in the future. But it also means that your code stays on your network and you've not got a third party snooping through it. So Gitty has been out for a long time now and it's got a load of stars and accolades to its name and I'm really excited to show you how to set this up. So as always, we're gonna jump straight into the code to deploy this. We're gonna be using Docker for this deployment, but you can use something like a standard virtual machine if you wanted to, or even an LXC. Once we've gone through that, we'll then deploy the container, and then I'll show you how to connect it and give you an example of doing some syncs and some clones using VS Code. So looking through the Docker Compose, I've made this a multi-container deployment. That's because I want to leverage an external database for all of the performance reasons that come with it. You probably don't need to do this if it's just going to be you on a home lab, but certainly if you're going to do it at scale, you want a database that's going to be performant. And I've chosen Postgres to do that, although you can use MySQL if you wanted to. So looking through the container setup, I've pinned this to version 1.2.1.4, which is the latest version as of this video, given it the container name of Gitia. I've set the user ID to be 1000, so this won't be running as root. And I've then set the credentials and the port and the IP for the database, which we'll come on to later. The trick here is they'll both be on the same Docker network. So for the host name, you can simply put DB, which is the container name that we'll get onto later. I've set it to restart as always, and I've given it some volumes. Chiefly, we have the Gitia data volume, which is where all of your data is going to sit. Now, I've just used the dot slash notation here. So this is going to create a folder within the Docker Compose location. But obviously, you can change that to wherever you want on your host and your files will be stored there. It also wants to know the time zone and the local time because that will be useful for syncing and making sure that the times and the changes, etc. match up. This depends on the database, which we'll come on to in a moment. It's on the network of proxy, which if we scroll down now, we go onto the traffic labels. This means that we're gonna get a nice green tick and we can use things like HTTPS to access it. And also we can use it in VS Code to make sure that our code is sent to our server in an encrypted tunnel. Now there's nothing special here compared to my previous videos. I'm using the same set of traffic labels and this should be sufficient to get it up and running. Into the database, as I mentioned, I've set it to Postgres 14. Again, it's restart always, and we've set the username, password, and database itself all to Gitia. Obviously change that if you're gonna be using this in any production environment, and I recommend you change it anyway, even in a home environment. Next, we've again created a dot slash folder for the data for the database, and we've also put it onto the proxy network. And as I mentioned, that enables you to call this container simply by its name. Then we specified that the proxy network is external to true. That's because it's already been created when we spun up traffic. If you need to know how to spin up traffic, go and watch my previous video. Now that we've been through the config, we simply need to copy our Docker Compose file onto our Docker host. So you can do that manually or you can do it through VS Code. So I'm gonna connect remotely to my Docker host through VS Code. If you want to know how to do this, go and check out my previous video. But I'm going to connect down here, connect to a host, and I've already got set up my Docker host here. So this will now open up an SSH connection to my Docker host. It's going to ask me for my password. And now that should connect me in. And now that I'm connected to my Docker host, I can see all the files and folders in my home folder. And now it's a simple case of copying over that config file, that Docker Compose file, onto this machine. So in the Docker Compose folder, I've created a folder here already called Gitia. And in there, I've got this Docker Compose file, which we just walked through. So now we're in a position to start spinning this up. And so to do that, we can hop into our terminal here. We can navigate to this location. 
and we're going to need to run a sudo docker compose up dash d. Once we've put in our password, we should be off to the races. That's going to go away and pull that container down and start building that, and I'll see you on the other side. One thing that's worthwhile doing is making sure now that whatever you specified within your traffic labels, i.e. down here, you create a DNS entry for it. So now you can see that this has been created and I've already added a DNS entry into my pie hole. So just add that whatever you're using. And now with any luck, I can go to gittier.jimsgarage.co.uk and hopefully we'll see the welcome page. So I'm gonna copy that, fire up my browser and I'll see you in just a second. So with that pasted into my browser, let's hit return. Bingo, we're into the configuration. Now I'm just gonna leave everything here pretty much as default. That's just because I want to show you how to work this rather than going through all the nuts and bolts. Typically, you don't really need to change anything in here and most of the values will be pre-populated from the environment variables within the Docker Compose file. But if you did want to make any last minute tweaks here, do that. But it's probably a good idea then to go back and make sure your Docker Compose is also up to date and reflective of those changes. So I'm just going to scroll down and I'm gonna click install Gitier. Once that's installed, we should be taken now to the home page. And perfect, we're now at the home page. Now, once you reach the home page, there isn't a default admin user or password available. You need to create your first account so you can register here. Now, when you do that, the first user you create will be the administrator. And importantly, there's also open ID connect. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video because I want to keep this tight. But if you remember in previous videos, I've showed you how to use things like Zitadel and Authentic. And thankfully, on the Authentic web page, there's a handy guide to show you how to set up all the endpoints for Gitia. So go and have a read at that. Check out my video on Authentic because I walk you through the process of doing this for Portana. And it's pretty much exactly the same setup, just with different URLs. So I'm going to create a new account for this. So I'm going to hit register now and I'm going to enter my username, my email address and my password and then hit register account and I'll see you on the other side. So now that's populated, I'm going to register and yes, now we're into the main page. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to quickly show you how to set up a repository and then how to use it. So to do that, we need to click on the plus in the top right and we need to click new repository. I'm just going to call this one home lab and the owner is set to James. That's my only user. If you had multiple users and you wanted different owners for different repositories, you could obviously go and do that. I'm going to leave everything as default, but it's nice to see that you get descriptions, templates and all that good stuff to give you the flexibility of being able to label and create your own unique flavor to this. And what's great is there's so many advanced features here. It pretty much replicates everything that you're used to in things like GitHub, GitLab, etc. So leaving all this as default for now, I'm going to create the repository. So now that is created, it gives us some handy ways to connect to this. Now I'm going to choose HTTPS and I'm going to copy this URL here. I'm now going to head back into VS Code and we're now going to connect to this repository. So to get this working, I'm going to head to the ribbon with a control shift and a P and I'm going to do a git clone. I'm going to paste in the repository that we've got and I'm going to click clone from here. This is now going to ask for somewhere to store this on my local computer. So I've just created a folder on my desktop called Gitia just for this demonstration. So I'm going to select that and then select as my repository. So now that's selected, I'm gonna click open to make this my active workspace. And as you can see, there's no files or folders or anything in it because it's blank, which is what we expect. So let's make an example. So I'm gonna create now a new file called test.md for markdown, and we can put an hello in there. So now I've clicked save and let's just go back to Gitia just so you can see that this is blank. If I click on the home tab and go to this repository, you'll see that there's no files, no folders, anything in here. So now back in VS Code, let's synchronize this so we can commit it. 
So I'm going to do a commit and push. And I'm just going to call this one test. Now that should be pushed up now to Gitia. So I'm going to check that. Now if I do a refresh, hooray, we've got test. And we can see in there that we've got hello. So now we've got a local repository that we can push and pull to. And for example, if I want to take this a step further, I can then copy my existing things that I upload to all my GitHub, so my public GitHub page for all of these demonstrations. I could then stick those into my VS Code repository and then upload them and have them all locally as well. That'd be really handy if you want to keep all your secrets and things in there. As I said, I recommend you do encrypt those and I'll show you how to do that later. So let's now make this a bit more full-fledged. So I've copied all of the config files I've already uploaded to my public GitHub and I'm just going to paste them into here. So that's all of them. Now if we hop back into VS Code, you'll see that they're all now down here on the right. So now if I do a commit and push it, so on an update, it's going to push all of those files and look how quick it is when you do it locally. And if we now go to Gitia, click on that Home Lab tab, you can see that now I've got my entire GitHub repository locally on my own instance using Gitia. It's that simple. So now you have all the benefits of a private repo. Now, unfortunately, I was hoping to bring you how to do this with SSH access, but I've tried exhaustively all four of the recommendations on the Gitia website, but to no avail. So if you've got this working, please do let me know and I'll do a follow up to this video. It might be something to do with the version of Ubuntu I'm using, or it might just be my own failure. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you've got everything you need now, bar the SSH, to be able to host your own private Git repository. Let me know if this is something that you're going to use and what you're going to use it for. It'd be great to hear some more of your projects. Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.